Sometimes people say levels are easy to clear, but these you can do in a sixth of a minute. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 genius shortcuts in video games you totally missed. Starting off with number 10, it's Hitman 3's Dubai Top of the World. This one is truly incredible. You don't even have to do any tricks or glitches to make it happen. You just need a really fast trigger finger and a little luck. In the first mission for Hitman 3, you have to assassinate two guys who are basically never in the same room except at the very start. Normally, it'll take you quite a while to wander around this place and figure out how to take care of these guys, but if you start the mission from the elevator and bring along a silenced pistol, it's possible, if you are lucky, to take out both of these dudes from only a few steps from your starting position. You do need pinpoint precision with your shots if you want to pull it off, but it is totally doable. You just run forward a bit, look up to the left to shoot the first guy, and then turn around and look up the balcony to shoot the second guy. Now you just run back to the elevator and you are done. It turns a half hour level into a 10 second level, and it is amazing that some people even figured this one out at all. At number 9 is Titanfall 2's Gauntlet completed in just over 11 seconds. After completing the basic tutorial in Titanfall 2, the game has a course you run called The Gauntlet. It compares your time to an in-game leaderboard, pretty much like the training sequence from Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Obviously, there's a lot more movement options in Titanfall 2, so speedrunners latched onto this pretty instantly. And they've been getting through it at just increasingly insane speeds. Normally, it's going to take players a minute or two to get through this, but a certain speedrunner named Cash Mayo managed to get that time down to just a little over 11 seconds, which is totally nuts. The reason they're able to move so fast is by using a trick called damage boosting, which allows them to use the momentum from a grenade blast to just rocket through this trial in a fraction of the time it's supposed to take. Getting through this isn't purely based on moving speed either. You have to take out a series of dummies along the way, so the fact they're able to accurately toss grenades and hit the remaining targets while moving so fast is actually amazing. So at least one guy was able to get through this gauntlet in just about 10 seconds, but I don't know that this is something that just anybody's going to be able to pull off. We cannot do it. To be clear, we have tried and just cannot. At number 8 is Resident Evil 4's defeating Krauser in 10 seconds. This is a crazy trick that I actually never knew about. For some reason in Resident Evil 4, Krauser, one of the toughest bosses in the game, is very weak to a simple knife. This is specifically for the section where you have to be Krauser after he places the time bombs, so it's not gonna help you beat the entire level if you use this trick, but at least it'll get you to the toughest part while you're on the clock, so it is a pretty useful trick. You know the part I'm talking about, right? Um, you get this key piece and Krauser ambushes you. You have to beat him in under three minutes or else you both die. It is a tough part, and it's likely you'll run out of time the first time you experience this section. But if you just throw away any sense of self-preservation and just try to fight him with a knife instead of, you know, a gun, it kills him in seconds. Now, finishing the part in under 10 seconds is going to take a little luck, but it has been done in the past. And either way, using a knife turns this from a tough fight into a cakewalk. At number 7, Dishonored 2's Dust District is actually possible to solve in seconds. One of the best levels in Dishonored 2 is the Dust District. It is not an assassin mission like what you're doing most of the game, it's more of a transitional level, but it's still really good. The objective is to get into this old mansion in the titular Dust District, basically a slum that periodically has dust storms that blow through it. The mansion's locked up and you have to support one of the two warring factions in the area if you want to get in. Help other faction and they'll help you get an answer to the puzzle door that locks up the mansion, but it is possible with a little brain power to solve the riddle yourself. It can take some time, however, and the puzzle is randomly generated every time you start the mission, so you can't just simply look up the solution online. What you can do is look up a puzzle key, however. You see, on the note you get containing the clues to the lock, certain sections of the text always correspond to one another. The syntax of the note never changes, just the proper noun, so if you know which name connects to which object, it makes it trivially easy to solve the puzzle. Yes, you will skip one of the best levels in the game, but it is awesome they even let you do that. And number six is Super Mario Galaxy 2's Fiery Flotilla Skip. This one might take a little longer than 10 seconds, but it lets you get through a level extremely quickly. Super Mario Galaxy and its sequel are all about platforming around crazy gravity environments, and where there's messed up gravity, there's room for exploits. There are a lot of shortcuts hidden around these games, both intentional and unintentional, but this one's probably the fastest. During the final stage for World 1, normally you'd have to find a way through this giant door to proceed to the boss area. It is not a massive level or anything, but it's what you spend most of the stage doing. 
If you don't want to bother with all that, there is an easier way. Just jump on top of this thwop, wait for it to rise all the way, and then backflip and do an air spin to get on top of the wall. Now you just run on top of the wall to the right, get to the parapet, and do a long jump toward the floating planet thing, I guess, in the distance. If you did it right, you'll get caught in its gravity and it'll start the boss battle. Congrats, you basically skipped the entire level. Like I said, there are a few levels like this in the Mario Galaxy games, but this is definitely one of the fastest. And number five is Deus Ex, skipping the entire first mission. Anyone who has played and replayed Deus Ex might start to get a little sick of the first level. It's big, you don't have a lot of your tools at that point in the game, and you are weak as a kitten and can't shoot anything worth a damn, so players decided to just figure out how to skip it. There are actually a couple of ways to do this, but probably the fastest and easiest one is the gas grenade trick. Basically, it's possible in this game to get through locked doors by getting NPCs to go through them. Normally, to complete the first mission, you have to deal with the terrorist leader in the ruins of the Statue of Liberty. After that, the doors to the Unit Co. building will open and you continue the game. With this little strategy, you can trick someone into opening the Unit Co. doors for you, allowing you to basically bypass the whole terrorist situation. Doing it's relatively easy too. You just throw a gas grenade at the right side of the unit co building. With a little luck, one of the NPCs inside will unlock the front door and run outside. So you just go inside and the game proceeds as if the first mission was completed. This is another one that might take a little bit longer than 10 seconds. It's still ridiculously fast though, because it's one of the most famously difficult levels for an opening of an FPS game. At number four is Final Fantasy X, killing the final boss with a zombie spell and a Phoenix down. For some reason, it's really easy to kill the final boss in Final Fantasy X. Honestly, it's pretty easy without even using this trick, but this really speeds things up. I'm not talking about the previous fights against Sin or Braska's final Aeon here. I'm talking about Yu Yevon, the boss you fight in Sin's core at the very end. He's not particularly aggressive. He just likes to cast gravity spells on you, and that only takes off a percentage of your total HP, meaning it's impossible for him to kill you. The annoying thing is that it just loves to heal itself. So if you're not over level, it's still time consuming to take it down. Say you want to skip all that though, just cast the zombie spell on this guy. Remember, in Final Fantasy games, the zombie status made it so healing items hurt you instead of heal, making it so that a life restoring Phoenix down would instantly kill you. Bizarrely, it works on the final boss. After giving it the zombie status effect, you just toss the phoenix down at it and that's it, it's over. No one really knows why it's possible, it might have just been a mistake. Most RPGs make it so basic enemies are resistant to stuff like that, but they don't do that with the final boss. But mostly this guy's just a waste of time anyway, so being able to get through it faster is very nice. At number 3 in Portal, the test chamber 14 can just be skipped. It's a game filled with opportunities to skip sections of levels, but the easiest and fastest can be found in Test Chamber 14. This one teases you with the exit right from the start, of course. It's gonna take a, a little more running around before the game lets you actually leave, but if you just want to skip right to it, it's honestly not that hard. All you have to do is drop a portal on the ground in front of the exit, then go up the stairs. After you cross them, the stairs lower back down, leaving a nice long fall for you to build up speed. So just throw down another portal at the bottom of that pit and fall down. That'll eject you from the other portal high enough that you can get to the exit. There are so many more skips to be found in Portal and Portal 2, but this one is great for highlighting how easy some of the things can be to pull off with just a little foresight. And number two is Super Mario 64 skipping the Wario Stadium. It's a buggy game. Like, let's just say this, Mario Kart 64 is kind of buggy. Due to how the Nintendo 64 works, there are exploit skips and all kind of crazy glitches that can be used and abused by players if they know what they're doing, too. Speedrunners have taken advantage of this for years, and many of the classic games from the N64 library remain popular speedrunning categories for that very reason. One of the best tricks I've seen is in Wario Stadium in Mario Kart 64. Basically, with the right angle and timing, you can get over a barrier right at the start of the race, then reposition and jump back over it, and there you go. That's it. Just go over the finish line and you completely skip it. It is one of the longer tracks in the game, so pulling this trick right off is essential for a glitch speed run. It's not so easy though, it's not something you'll just be able to do if you feel like it, but with enough practice, speedrunners can perform this skip without breaking a sweat, taking minutes off their total time. And finally, Sonic unleashes Windmill Isle 3 during the day, which can be finished in under 5 seconds. It has to be seen to be believed, because Sonic games are obviously all about speed, but still, finishing a stage in under 5 seconds is nuts. 
The only reason it works is because the stage is one of those recursive levels that the level exit is actually right behind the level start. You just have to take the long way to get to it. Sonic isn't really designed to go backwards in the game, so pulling it off is a little tricky, but after a really specific sequence of button inputs, you finish the stage in under five seconds, and that alone makes this really impressive. Here is a bonus. Uh, Clue can be finished in under one second. It's kind of a joke, but a YouTuber named Sarah Doc was able to beat this PC Clue game in under a second. Even though it's a speed run of a board game and no one cares about it, it's still ludicrously fast. Like, just trying to follow along with what they're even doing is a challenge, though. It is it is too fast. And that is all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to click the notification bell. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.